Today, I'm looking at a new D-Pin project. It is so new, you're not going to earn anything. This new D-Pin project is called Wingbits. It's a community-driven project that aims to enhance aviation safety, and it's doing this by creating a decentralized version of the flight tracking network. At its core, Wingbits is using ADSB technology, which stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, which will be used to aggregate and analyze flight data and improve the travel experience globally. Like I mentioned, this is still in beta. There's a token that's been assigned and it's called Wings, but there is no value to it. So what they have mentioned in the white paper is the current rewards that you're earning during testnet will be reissued to you after the main launch. Tokenomics for this project have not been finalized and is subject to change. So that would be a good idea to jump on their Discord and just stay in the loop of announcements. Uh, the light paper and the Discord and everything else you're going to need about this project will be linked in the description below. So these Wings tokens that you're going to be receiving for installing the antenna and contributing to the network are going to be assigned to a hex. So if you're familiar with other projects like WeatherXM, uh, Helium, Fry, they usually have the map that has been broken down into hexagon shapes. And these hexagon shapes are assigned to each area. When I was looking at earnings, I checked out their Discord. Each hexagon will be rewarded 80 to 85 tokens per day. So if you're living in a hexagon shape that has four antennas and they're distributing 80 tokens a day, that means each antenna will be getting 20 tokens each. So next up is going to be the hardware that you're going to need to get this up and running. And it's broken down into three different pieces. The first one is going to be a computing device. You can get a Raspberry Pi, a uh, potato, uh, orange Pi, and, uh, and apparently some Helium hotspots. So if you have a, a Helium hotspot that's Raspberry Pi based, you should be able to use it. I'm reusing another Raspberry Pi that I had laying around, it's Raspberry Pi 4. So the steps that I'm showing is gonna be for Raspberry Pi, but it's gonna be very similar for other devices. So right now for Raspberry Pi, I was talking to a couple of people in the Discord and Raspberry Pi 0 is having some functionality issues. You might wanna stay away from that one. The next thing that you're gonna need is an ADS USB receiver. This is what's gonna plug into the device and it's also gonna allow you to connect an antenna to it. They had a few listed in the documentation, which was FlightAware, RadarBox, uh, ADSB Exchange, and they also listed uh, other SDR dongles. So there might be specific ones that work. Before you make that purchase, I would definitely double check in the Discord to make sure there's no compatibility issues, but I'll list some options down below. The third component that you're going to need is an antenna. Uh, so it's going to be a 1090 megahertz antenna. So you're going to need a SMA cable that's going to connect one end to the antenna and the other end is going to go into your USB dongle. The length of that SMA cable really depends on your setup and how long you actually need it. Uh, you can make that judgment call. There's an optional component that you can pick up that's not required, and that would be a filter that you can add onto the line that will reduce noise. So we have everything that we need to get this up and running. The next thing that we're going to do is set it up. Uh, so there's four steps that I'm going to be following right now. The first one is going to be to create an account on Wigbits and have it verified. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and find our longitude and latitude of the location that we're going to be placing the antenna. After we have that, we're going to go ahead and configure our miner. Our miner is going to be the compute device, which in my case is going to be a Raspberry Pi 4. So the last thing that we're going to do is physically connect everything and make sure it's online. So let's get started. All right, so we're at the wingbits.com website. You can click on the sign up button right over here and register an account. When you register an account, you're going to get emailed a verification link. You want to make sure you click that and activate your account. Once you have an account and you're signed in, what you want to do is register your location. So you can select on the antenna section and then register an antenna. We don't have our antenna set up or connected at all. What we want to do is go ahead and register an account. Uh, so what you can do is either enter the address or the longitude or latitude, or you can just zoom in into an area and then you can click on it and it'll place the antenna temporarily where you are. I just randomly selected a spot, uh, but that's basically the idea. So we want to go ahead and register a location and then you can click on the register button. So I've registered my location. My hex is now reserved. Uh, it's giving me the offline status. So what we want to do right now is we want to go ahead and set up our Raspberry Pi or Linux based system. Uh, and they give us this curl command right over here to install the software. The next step is going to be to configure your Raspberry Pi. In the interest of time, I'm going to quickly go through the steps of installing Raspberry Pi OS on an SD card. If you want a full length version of how to do that, I'll make sure I link that in the description below. Okay, we're going to install Raspberry Pi OS. We're going to be downloading the software for Windows, and I'm gonna minimize this window. We'll go ahead and install the Raspberry Pi Imager setup. You're gonna be selecting the device that you have. I have the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, you select whatever is best for you. Then we're gonna be choosing the operating system. So I'm gonna select this last option down here at the bottom. I want a 64-bit version of the light. 
and we'll select that. So we're gonna go over here, it's going to populate, I'm gonna select that, and then we can go and click on next. You can customize your settings. We're gonna click on the edit settings option over here. You can set the preferences that you want and have this done in advance. Okay, so I've set the username and password right over here. If you're gonna be connecting to this to your wireless LAN, it's great to do that right now. So you're gonna go ahead and select this option and then pre-configure it. These are the settings I'm selecting. If you go over to services, uh, you can enable SSH, and this is where you can type in your username and password, and then we can go ahead and click on save. If it's gonna save your settings, and then you can proceed with the installation. We're gonna click on yes. It's letting you know that everything on your SD card is gonna be erased. So I'm okay, I'm fine with that. I'm gonna click on yes, and now it's gonna go ahead and write to my storage. The installation is now complete and go ahead and click on continue and you can safely eject your device and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. All right, so now that we have the Raspberry Pi OS installed, I'm gonna plug it in and I'm gonna boot it up and now we're gonna install the software. All right, so I have my Raspberry Pi connected to my network with a fresh OS installed. I'm just gonna pull up my network right now. There we go. And you can see right over here, I have the Raspberry Pi connected and I have an IP address. So we need to know the IP address of your Raspberry Pi device. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to this right now using PuTTY. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And now I have a login screen. So the login screen is gonna be, you're gonna type in the username and password that you have for this device. So when you've configured Raspberry Pi OS, you would have been assigning it a username and password. You can go ahead and enter that in right now. Okay, so now that we're logged into the Raspberry Pi device, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be copying this line in right now. This is gonna allow us to install the software that we need. So there's a nice copy button over here that we can click on it. It lets us know that we've copied it. And then we can go back over here and then we can paste it in. Once it's pasted in, you're gonna hit enter. And now it wants you to enter in the device ID. So the device ID is right over here on the page. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the copy button and I'm gonna bring it back over here and then I'm gonna paste it in by right clicking on the screen. And you can see that the hyphens are in. You wanna make sure that the hyphens are in. There's no extra spaces. And then you can go ahead and hit enter. So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna unpack everything and install it on the device. This might take a few minutes. So what we'll do is we'll jump ahead to the next step. All right, so that took a few minutes. The installation is now complete. It's letting us know that we can reboot our device. So we're gonna type in sudo space reboot and I'll hit enter and it's gonna disconnect me. We'll wait a few minutes and then I will reconnect my putty session. So I waited a few minutes and now I'm gonna SSH back into my device. And the last thing that we need to do is set our location. Right over here I have my location, which is my longitude and latitude. Uh, now there is a line that I'm gonna copy and paste from the website. All right, so I'm gonna paste in the line here. I hit the space on my keyboard and then I'm gonna copy and paste in the longitude and latitude. So I'm just going to delete the comma out and then I'll hit enter. So the WingBit software is installed. Now all I'm gonna do is plug in my USB dongle, connect the antenna and get it up and running. Okay, so I just plugged in the antenna outside and I'm refreshing the page right now. And you can see that my hex is now cleaned and the status is online. That means we're up and running and we're now online. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over here into the map section and inside the map section, it's zoomed out. It's showing me all of Ontario. So if you're an aviation nerd and you really like to follow this sort of stuff, this is gonna be a very fun tool to watch to see what's active in your space. Okay, so we have a couple options over here where you can see that it's gonna be uh, showing planes. And then we can switch over here to you can see antennas that are available. And it's mapping out different hexes in different areas of Ontario. Uh, I like leaving both on just so I can see the network grow. I find this very interesting and I'm really happy to be part of the network. Okay, and then if we click on the dashboard, now it's not gonna be able to pull any data. You can see that it says data will be available the day after an antenna comes online. So I'm not able to see anything yet, but this will populate within 24 hours. So it's up and running. I'm gonna start earning the Wings token. Again, this token has no value at all, but it will populate in my dashboard. If you follow my Twitter account, I'll make sure I make some posts so you can see what my daily earnings look like as well as my monthly earnings. So that's it. I hope you found this guide useful. If you did, please smash that like button. I'll make sure I link everything I used in the description below. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.